Welcome to Business Tips with Michael Tobian. Today's topic is getting started with bookkeeping. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed my business tips videos so far. Today's topic is mostly geared toward new business owners that don't really know where to start with keeping track of their business finances. We won't be going over accounting concepts so much, but rather pointing you in the right direction in terms of getting your business organized with business finances. So for more advanced accounting concepts, we'll be discussing that in a future video. So make sure you subscribe and follow so that you can stay up to date on all the fun. So before I jump into some things, let me just preface with the disclaimer that I'm not an accountant and I'm not giving you any specific accounting advice for your business. Every business is different. I'm just sharing what has worked for me in the past when I've started new businesses. So I would advise that you seek an accountant for specific bookkeeping and accounting practices that's gonna be best for your operation. As a new business owner, it's important for you to separate yourself from the business. I have found that new business owners often commingle their personal finances with their business finances. But if you want to have a scalable operation, you really need to separate yourself from the business entity. For people who've never owned a business before, this is kind of difficult to do. It seems so easy just to ask somebody, uh, like a client, to Venmo your personal account when you provide a service, or simply pay for supplies with cash or with your personal credit cards. Well, this is really a mentality that you should get over if you wanna grow your business. If you have a very simple service that you offer and you have no desire for expansion whatsoever, then maybe you're fine just using your personal accounts. And then at the end of the year, when you prepare your taxes, you'll just need to gather those together and give them to your CPA and prepare a tax return. And maybe you're fine. Maybe you're fine just keeping track of expenses on an Excel spreadsheet if you're very small. A lot of people who do simple businesses, uh, you know, on the side perhaps do this. Babysitters, tutors, and things like that. People who just kind of work out of their home for a little bit of side income. But again, at tax time, you're gonna to need to gather all that information and put it together for your accountant. However, the larger your business grows, the more difficult that strategy is gonna be. If you plan on growing your business at some point, it will become too big for this personal commingling of your finances to become an effective strategy. So unless you're planning on having a very small operation long-term, you may consider doing the following basic things to separate your business from yourself. All right, number one, connect with an accountant to handle your business tax returns. So I would suggest you talk to your friends, business owners that you know, you know, advisors, and ask if they have any suggestions on a CPA that's gonna be good for your business. Finding a CPA or an attorney or something like that is usually better done through a referral than just looking on the internet. A CPA is going to file your business tax returns and will often do your personal tax returns as well and they usually charge separately for both if you have a separate entity for your business than your personal one. If you're a sole proprietor, you can put your business income and revenue on a Schedule C, but it is often still advisable to have an accountant help you with this, as they can help limit your tax liability by using different accounting strategies. All right, number two, set up a business bank account that is separate from your personal account. This may not seem like a big deal early on, but the larger your, your business gets, it really becomes essential and it's gonna become more difficult for you to separate your personal from your business accounts and finances. I would start now separating everything. When you purchase things, purchase them, when you purchase things for your business, purchase them through your business accounts. And when you purchase things for your personal usage, use your business credit cards and your business accounts. Don't mix these two things up or down the road, it's gonna be an accounting nightmare. Number three, you may want to register your business and have it be separate from yourself. But this might be an LLC or an S corporation or something like that. You can talk to your accountant and figure out the best entity for your business and your personal situation. There's actually another video that I've done called Registering Your Business that talks a little bit about uh, the steps that you can go through to set up your business with the state and local governments. Number four, I would invest in some kind of accounting software that's separate from your personal finances. 
So there's pros and cons of using an accounting software. I will start with the cons. It might be a little bit of an expense to purchase the accounting software. There might be a little bit of a learning curve. You're gonna to have to get used to accounting for things in that accounting software rather than just on the back of a napkin like you may be doing with your personal finances. And it you know, may be a little bit of effort behind that. You'll have to be consistent with it. You know, Every week you're gonna to have to enter your expenses and things like that. But you may find that the pros far outweigh the cons. If you have any interest in being scalable, having an accounting software is gonna allow you to scale your business. QuickBooks is a very common one that's used, and QuickBooks works for small businesses, but as you grow, QuickBooks is very robust, and very large companies use QuickBooks to handle all their accounting. Other pros, taxes, audits, loans, things like that are easier as you may need to print out reports. If you go into your accounting software, you can just simply print out the report. You don't have to gather a bunch of information. Invoicing is easier with an accounting program. A lot of these accounting programs, you can just send clients an invoice straight through the program. And it's often very simple to do that. When I was starting my first business, uh, I was in college and a friend of mine said to me, uh, buy a simple version of QuickBooks. It will be the best money you ever spent. Well, I did that and it was. Prior to that, I was just keeping track of stuff on an Excel spreadsheet, but I just remember, you know, maybe a year down the road thinking, wow, I'm really glad I invested in some accounting software. There's other accounting softwares you can use. I feel, I feel like QuickBooks is the most commonly used one. As a business broker, I would dive into a lot of financials from a lot of businesses and they were almost always using QuickBooks. Most bookkeeping companies use QuickBooks when they're keeping track of things, and it's kind of the industry standard in my opinion. They have an online version of QuickBooks that you can access from anywhere, or you can put a desktop version on your computer. And like I said earlier, QuickBooks can be used for very simple business operations or more com complex as you grow. I have a bookkeeper and an office manager that keep track of our expenses, and they do complicated things like job cost accounting, uh, credits and debits, they move expenses to and from the balance sheet to the profit and loss statement, and it gets kind of complicated, so much so that I have two people working on it. Uh, but most businesses have a very simple accounting process. You provide a service or product, you charge a customer, then you have expenses. And QuickBooks can, can really slickly handle all of this. You keep track of all your customers' information in QuickBooks, you can invoice them, uh, you can even take credit card payments straight through QuickBooks, and uh, QuickBooks will do the majority of the work for you. But it really only works if you commit to doing that and operating through your accounting software. So it'll take a little bit of time every week to update your QuickBooks records, send out invoices, uh, see who owes you money. Uh, you may still pay for some business expenses through your personal account, but you can easily import those into your accounting software. So I would not be intimidated about this process. I would watch some basic tutorials about how to get going with QuickBooks. It may be advantageous for you to take an accounting class and understand some very basic accounting principles, but it's really something that's gonna benefit you in the end, doing it the right way. When it comes to taking an, a possible accounting class or tutorials, there's lots of good information on YouTube. Sometimes colleges and universities teach uh, uh, accounting classes that you can just audit, take one class, you're not getting a grade or anything, but it's sort of like a course. There's trade schools that have basic courses on it. At some point down the road, your business may grow to a point where you need a dedicated bookkeeper to handle the books. You may even start out with a bookkeeper because you just don't want to handle that and you have a big vision for your company and you're really headed places and just don't want to deal with the bookkeeping. You can usually hire these bookkeepers through a CPA firm where there's just lots of freelance bookkeepers out there. Still, I would suggest that you understand what's going on with your books so that you can dig in and learn about it. It would be a mistake in my mind to hire a bookkeeper and never really learn how QuickBooks works or never really learn some basic accounting principles and concepts. Um, as a business owner, you may want to dive in and print out a report for yourself. So you should have some knowledge and know-how about how this works. In fact, I recommend you having some kind of know-how about all aspects of your business. When I started my company, Empire Casino Parties, I learned how to deal 
all the casino games, and I learned all the ins and outs of everything about the casino industry. Now this isn't a real casino, we provide faux casino parties for corporate events, holiday parties, and stuff like that. And I don't know how to deal a lot of those games, but I learned how to deal even the complicated game of craps and some of these other games so that I could know everything about that business. Well, I don't go to those parties and deal these games anymore, but there were several parties that I went to to deal them so that I could understand it. Um, it's kind of the same with bookkeeping. I don't do my own bookkeeping anymore, but I know how to do it, and I know how to talk intelligently about it with my bookkeeper and with my CPA so that I can completely understand how everything works and have a basic understanding of all of it. Thanks for joining the discussion today. Feel free to use the comments below if you have any questions or other comments about what we've talked about. And I hope you'll subscribe and follow for more business tips down the road.